forgotten. So there, back to the DNA in, in, in <laughs> ancient Egypt once again. Well, uh, you uh, can go look into Zahi Awas on that. Well, let, you know, let, let's say that we propose that he isn't a quote me clone. The fact is, if you look at the bloodlines of his father, uh, in, uh, in it was coming from uh, Kenya. The bloodline actually is the pharaonic bloodline that uh, passed through the, because uh, his father was was Muslim, right? Uh, and if you actually look at the bloodlines, it's very possible that he actually could have uh, Egyptian bloodline uh, in him. Uh, he's not just quote black African; he's actually black African Arab, is what he is. And an, an Atlantean specialist, uh, one of the studies Atlantis uh, was on coast to coast recently, and said that yeah. Obama, Obama would speak fluent Atlantean because it's actually a base rate of the uh, Indonesian language. Uh, so he also speaks Atlantean, just to add to that. Yeah. Now, people find this a little weird, but the fact is that it's like the symbology. Uh, the, the occultists around the world are very into numerology, times and dates, like 9-11. They're very into uh, things like things occurring at the 33rd parallel. Uh, there's specific things, and you feel, you'll see these patterns, which is why you see certain dates and locations, which is why I've said and repeatedly told people that we need to, and again, the future is not solid, it's liquid. It's not solid like the, you know, your ice maker. You have to understand that if we permit Israel, the rogue nation of Israel, to attack Iran, it will stand, start at the end of uh, the sacrifice of Iran, which is like a, a cultic sacrifice, will start the precipitation of the end of this age, the end of the world, and the reemergence of this new empire of evil. Uh, we can't let that happen. And the fact is they're planning, they're plotting, they're getting ready for a nuclear attack on Iran. And thank God, hopefully it won't happen. But the fact is all the military evidence indicates that it's not just a military attack, it's an occultic ceremony too. Yes, and that takes us straight to the Gulf of Aden, which they say is the death place of Cain and Abel. They say is the original Garden of Eden. It is. In fact, uh, if you ask anybody who's lived there in Yemen, or in the area of the Red Sea, they'll tell you it's the Garden of Aden, Eden, E-D-E-N. That is where the Garden of Eden was in the Mesopotamian Valley. It was there at the bottom uh, end of the, Re of the Red Sea there on the uh, eastern coast, which is basically uh, the uh, most western flank of Yemen. That's where Eden was. Okay, so let's pull this story all together. So we have uh, Supreme David Rockefeller, Lucifer, announcing that he's building the temple in Jerusalem. Now, this temple is based on Solomon's temple, and if you're into the occult and magic, uh, you're going to study Solomon's grimoires. The uh, Bicentennial Mall outside of Nashville is uh, Solomon's seal to bind spirits. You know, that was put there in 1996, lighting things. We can use these type of, uh, because they are so ritualistic, I use this type of data to project what they're going to do. And so my projection has been for the 4th of July, the Pope moving on the Temple Mount. Now, the reason this all comes together is when we're looking at things like the Temple of Solomon, what we're talking about now is also the inside of a Freemasonic temple. That is what they're doing their rituals in, as they circle the altar, and this is what all your leaders do, people. They go into these dark rituals, and they put on their hooded robes, and they, they do ritual around an altar, okay? Right. That is your leaders. That is your presidents. That is uh, your senators. and your No difference. Eyes wide shut, in other words. If you've exactly. seen that movie. Well, <laughs> but it's even more esoteric than that. Oh, much more. Uh, so... Let me just throw that. What we're looking at is that this is the Freemasonic level. They are inside of the, the Solomon's Temple. Solomon's Temple was built to house the Ark of the Covenant, right? And when we look at the Ark of the Covenant, we see a perfect electromagnetic transferring device that can be used to, as a weapon of mass destruction. That is what the Ark of the Covenant was done. Now we have an announcement just prior to our invasion of uh, Yemen that the Ark of the Covenant had been found there. Now, just prior to this, the Ethiopian church had announced they had the true Ark of the Covenant, and he was going to go meet with the Pope, and we never heard from him again. Later, he said, well, okay, we heard from him again, but he said uh, that they had the true Ark of the Covenant there in Ethiopia, but that they weren't going to show it off. He never meant to say they were showing it off. But just prior to our attack in Yemen, uh, the archaeologists announced that they had found evidence to suggest that the Ark of the Covenant is in Yemen. Next thing you know, America goes in. Next thing we find is a magnetic anomaly unfolding under the ocean, under the Gulf of Aden, that seems to be creating a vortex in the ocean there, what some people are calling a seagate. This whole area was taken under attack over the idea of piracy, and the coded name for the pirate ship that they had to save was the Sirius Star. And the Sirius Star is the same as Aleister Crowley's AA, the Agentum Astrum, 
the the silver star, the so, Sirius star, Sirius B, the dark sun. Right. It's so also the star of the NATO, U.S., U.K., China, Sweden, Iran, India, all into this area. While there's this magnetic anomaly under the ocean opening. Now, of course, the uh, dark sun you're talking about is no different than the dog star sun of the uh, Dogon tribe of, uh, of Africa. It's the same as the Thule Gellenschaft, uh, the black sun. Uh, it is the uh, it's called the serpent star. Uh, in fact, if you actually name the actual astronomical name of it, the red star you see in that particular Sirius B galaxy is called Betelgeuse. Interesting, hey? Absolutely. So, <laughs> may have pounded you with a little bit of information, but you need to go check out these names, Betelgeuse, B-E-T-E-L-G-E-U-S-E, -E -E. Betelgeuse. It's a super giant red star in the eye of the dragon. Well, I always like to ask the questions, what if? We, don't, we want to stretch people beyond, not necessarily to say this is my final conclusion, but to realize that the sources of information are bringing together the fact that our world is run by super scientists, such as the people that run uh, JPL, Jet Propulsion Labs, NASA, which in Hebrew reads high and lifted up in Hebrew. Uh, when you start understanding the nature of symbology of time and space and ley lines and specific latitudes, these people are using advanced mathematics and numerology to run everything in their life. In fact, that is the architecture of their universe. It's the symbology that they are the prescient power over the planet, even in the laying down of city streets the location of cities and capitals, uh, the times when they do specific events have specific numerological timing. And th this is quite amazing. Let's continue with some of our dialogue about uh, the fact that we are in a, a cosmic and a galactic battle. This is not something that's imaginary. It's very real. And the interesting movies and series that came out like Battlestar Galactica uh, and Star Wars and so on give hints at pieces of this, but don't want to come up with a full spectrum of what's really going on, do they? No. But they do, I, I definitely use them as tools for study. There's no doubt about this, right. that uh, the military-industrial complex is Hollywood. It always has been. There's no difference. And so, yeah, we can we track it from Walt Disney programming us to now the, you know, well, still Walt Disney programming us. Right. Uh, we see it in our leaders that they're just giving us words. You know, Obama comes out and says there's a deficit of trust. Yeah, you better believe that. He says we need to expand our moral imagination, right? And Disney's always telling you how they are going to capture your imagination. Uh, but Obama comes in and says, uh, we need soldiers on peacekeeping missions. I, is this not war is peace? He says our moral imagination says to bomb the heck out of them and then reap the re benefits of the reconstruction like Germany and Japan. We watch as they use predictive programming to engineer the whole structure prior to it happening so we had Morgan Freeman as our original Obama president in Hollywood to teach us about deep impact and incoming asteroids. And even Dave Chappelle did a great skit on this whole idea. We had the Will Smith coming in, get, engineering the idea of these genetic strains of, well, uh, vampiric <laughs> uh, zombies, uh, yeah, but exactly. also promoting the whole black president moving in. You know, it's predictive programming to Obama. We uh, At this point, so we see that they had built this concept of this, the Morgan Freeman, the savior of the planet, the, the, the great high president that can save us all, and at the same time announced that we have this incoming Apophis. And now they're saying uh, U.S. scientists are calling for the creation of an international asteroid defense agency. Yeah, well, all, the, it's like yeah. we live in the sci-fi movies that we are watching. Well, what they do is they program us when they want to release it. I know from being, this is now, how many years ago would it be now? Uh, 16 years ago to uh, 14 years ago when I worked uh, there with CECOM. The fact is that they've had these space-based platforms. 95% of these uh, weapon systems are aimed out in space to incoming objects of various types, both artificial and non-artificial. And that, in fact, uh, part of uh, this whole process of geoengineering the Earth, which they've been playing around with, isn't just to, quote, affect global warming. That's the cover story. The real issue is to create a Dyson sphere against solar mass ejections, to use it for torsional vortex imaging so the Earth to lay out in four-dimensional space all the resources and looking at underground bases as well, of both uh, your potential enemies and other bases that are not, uh, how can I say, the normal inhabitants of this planet, and to understand exactly what's going on. And 
the average person is we call the profane doesn't want to believe this but those people listening in the lettered agencies are fully aware <clears throat> that what I'm talking about is real they they fully understand that uh, uh, why are they building bases as the uh, Jesse Ventura specialist that costs of hundreds of billions of dollars per year not only in America but around the world why are they in such a desperate uh, desire to do this but they won't even put uh, surge protectors on the power grid or harden our satellites against incoming solar mass ejections <clears throat> why are they just leaking information or gradually through big blockbuster movies or leaked uh, arg- things that come out in NASA and then they do a kind of a intellectual and what I call gymnastics to try to cover it up very poorly in fact in many ways so that you can kind of believe what you want Even, but if you're a hard-nosed scientist you look at it and say damn the Chandra satellite says there's something incoming below the ecliptic near the inner solar system below Jupiter uh, there's evidence that the solar um, you, you know, the protection of Earth from the magnetosphere is gone because last July they flew these five satellites right through the geomagnetosphere.